again it's Stuart from uh, Berkshire Guitar Amplifiers in Reading, England. On the bench today we have a Fender Supersonic and the customer has said that he doesn't think it has the power it used to have. It sounds maybe a little bit quiet. So I thought I'd show you how to measure the power, or how I measure, the power output of um, one of these guitar amplifiers. Now to do that I'm going to need to give you a little bit of theory, don't worry it's nothing too arduous. So I'll do that now and then we'll go back to showing you how to actually measure it. Okay, just a little bit of theory for you here. We, you, we need to know how we measure the power of a, of a sine wave. Here's your typical sine wave. This is what's coming out of the speaker with a, with a pure tone. And um, to measure the power of that, well you can see a sine wave spend, spends a certain amount of time at, at zero and a little bit of time up at uh, full power and the rest of the time somewhere in between. So you might intuitively guess that the power of a sine wave is not the same as the power of a, of a DC signal and that, and, and that the power would actually lie somewhere between the bottom and the peak, in other words, somewhere in the middle. You might guess it's actually in the middle, but actually, actually it isn't precisely that. So how do we measure the power of a sine wave? The answer is we take the peak voltage, which is of course half the peak to peak, sorry about my not very well drawn sine wave. So we take the peak voltage, in other words half the peak to peak voltage, and we multiply it by 0.707. Now that gives us the DC equivalent of this sine wave. Now the formula for power equals volts times amps. There's an old electrician's adage that says volts times amps lights lamps and that's a good way of remembering that, that the, uh, um, the power is voltage times current. Now when we measure the output of our um, power amplifier, of our guitar amplifier, we're going to be able to measure this peak-to-peak -peak voltage on the scope. I'll show you how, how I do that in a moment. Um, but we don't have access to the current. We don't know what current is going through the speaker. What we do have is the speaker resistance, R, which for example is 8 ohms. Well there's a relationship between I and R which is given by um, Ohm's law. V equals I R. Volts equals current times resistance. We can do a little bit of uh, basic maths here and, and uh, rewrite that for I by bringing this R underneath here. So I equals V over R. The current equals voltage upon resistance. So we can now substitute this I here for this I here and come up with our power equals volts times volts divided by resistance. So in other words I just took that there which is I and I put it in here to substitute for I. Well V times V is V squared as you know so we can rewrite this as V squared over R. Okay, so now we're in business. If I can measure the output peak-to-peak -peak sine wave on, a, on an oscilloscope whilst the amp is connected to an 8 ohm load, I can get out the DC equivalent of that voltage, which we, we already know is 0 0.707 times the peak. That gives me my V. I can square it and I can divide it by our resistance which as you know is 8 ohms. So that's the formula we're going to use. Let's now go and do a practical measurement and I'll show you how that works. Right now let me show you my setup. I've got this Fender Supersonic on the bench and coming out of the speaker connection on the back I have this blue lead which goes into my dummy load. This is something I made up some time ago it allows me to switch between uh, 4 and 8 ohms on this speaker. I've got some 100 watt power resistors there so plenty plenty of power 
and then, then I've got this chunky heat sink on here. Not that I ever run an amp long enough or hard enough to, to warm this up. But anyway, this is nice and nice and uh, chunky. And I have my oscilloscope probe connected to the across the across the load basically. Oscilloscope is over here, and as you can see, it's already it's got a little bit of signal on there already. What I'm now going to do um, is to wind up the input. I've just got a one kilohertz sine wave going in. And then I, we're going to uh, max out the amplifier. In other words, get it to square off, giving peak, peak power. Then we're going to measure what that power is using the formula I just told you. So here goes. The um, scope is on. Um, I'm just going to unplug my power supply. That's better. Right, the scope is on, so we've got two volts per division, but that's actually 20 volts per division because I have a times 10 probe, or, or divide by 10 probe. I always think times 10 is a little bit um, misleading. So that's 20 volts per division. Now if you watch as I turn up the input volume on the, on the um, amplifier, you see that's increasing, and at some point there, it's squaring off. See that squaring off there? I'll just back it off a little bit. And we've got here 20, 40, 60 volts peak to peak sine wave. I'm going to turn that down now because the amp is maxed out at 50 watts. Okay, this might look a little bit of a mess, but I'll, I'm just going to walk you through it. It's the same diagram as before. Here's our sine wave. And just to remind you, in order to get the DC equivalent of the sine wave, we take the peak voltage, which is half the peak to peak. We multiply it by 0 0.707, and that gives our DC equivalent voltage. To get our power, we use V squared over R. So we plug that voltage into this formula, V squared over R, and out will pop the power. OK, let's look at what we ha had here. If you remember, we had 60 volts peak to peak on the scope which is 30 volts peak and 30 times 0 0.707 is 21.21 now remember we want V squared over R, this is V 21.21, that's the DC equivalent voltage of a 60 volt peak to peak sine wave I think that's surprisingly low isn't it? so V squared is 21.21 squared which comes out at 450 our formula is V squared over R, and remember R is our resistance of our speaker or our load, which is 8 ohms in this particular case. 450 divided by 8 is 56 watts. So this amp is developing 56 watts, which is pretty good for two 6L6s, and certainly um, it's working exactly as it should do, and so I don't know why the customer is perceiving a quieter amplifier. I'll have to talk to him about that. Well I hope you enjoyed that. As you can see it's quite it's fairly straightforward to measure the uh, power output of an amplifier. Of course you'll need a little bit of gear. You need a dummy load, an oscilloscope and a signal generator so obviously it's not the sort of thing that most people have. But any amplifier you want to measure the power output that method works absolutely perfectly and I use it all the time. I think you can buy a fancy power meter which actually has a dial which tells you what power the amp's giving out but um, I like to eyeball the signal on the scope as well because that shows me what's going on inside the amp. Well that's it from me, I hope you enjoyed that one, I'll catch you on the next video and thanks for watching.